Hello, the internet. Hello, YouTube. Sorry, after um, I feel like two weeks of, or two weeks or one week, I don't know. I was, I was on time for a while and I, I missed it today. But today, uh, my camera like wouldn't turn on for some reason. I got it, obviously, because you're seeing me through that thing here. But um, I don't know what it was. I think something was wrong with one of the batteries. So like it needs a little charge and then the, the, uh, computer can take over charging it a little bit. So apologies, apologies, apologies out there a thousand times over. Um, right now I am just adding the link into my Instagram to let folks over there know um, that I went live tonight. How is, uh, how's everybody's weekend? How was everybody's week? Did you get up to anything fun? Um, you got anything fun going on this week? Hold on one second, and there we go. That's uploading onto YouTube. YouTube, onto the internet. The internet, do you like the internet? Welcome to the internet. I listened to some of the Bo Burnham Inside album earlier today, because every now and then parts of it get stuck in my head. Um, sorry, just one second, one second, one second. I don't even have a drink because I like I probably should have made 8.45. I was just running running late today. I only like, just got home from work um, about 30 minutes ago, and I was eating dinner, and I was like, oh, shoot. I said this for 8.30. I should have done 8.45. It's fine. We're all here now. It's fine. It's fun. It's dandy. Mm, I don't have anything exciting up here. I was just going to have a... I was just going to have a beer, but I guess I don't need it. It's okay. I don't want to run downstairs and then this playback of this video just has a empty wall with no one here. Um, I was actually going to do like a little gin martini, but I think it's all right. I'll put the gin in the freezer. So I heard this. I saw this. Well, like a clip came back up from the movie um, A Simple Plan. A Simple Plan? A Simple Plan? The Paul Feig movie with Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively and... Anyway, she makes a martini in it, and she's like, it's frozen gin. It's like swirl vermouth, then the gin, then the twist of the lemon in it. And so I had it last night for the Oscars, and uh, I figured I'd just have another one. So, oh, John's doing kickball. And he's sore. Hello, hello, everyone. Um, how's everyone doing? Just scrolling through the chat here. We got Erica in here, Trey's in here. Uh, Ross is in here. Ross and Lana are in the house. 2 a.m. Got home from Disney World. 2 a.m. this morning, then 71. Oh, my God. Yeah, because it's Monday. Oh, my gosh. Drinks and Monday live stream is what we've got planned tonight. What is everyone drinking this evening? Trina from Boston. Hello. Um, uh, on time is overrated. You are correct, Kat. I appreciate that. Uh... Sorry, I usually try to leave a message if I'm going to be a couple minutes late or something like that, though. I'm um, just scrolling through. We, oh, Alberta, Canada. Hello from Alberta, Canada. Hello, Cassandra. Um, oh, all good. Erica is making some progress on her sprained hand. Um, oh, Jeff did an escape room. My friend Amber wanted me to do an escape room on Friday, but I want to do one. I just wasn't, I wasn't in the vibe for that on Friday. Um, it's a lot of like, doing a lot of stuff, less stuff. No, John, it's not called a simple favor. It's not called a simple favor. It is called, oh, John, you're right. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Why don't I trust you more? It is called a simple favor. John wins the prize for tonight. Oh, look at Trey, Trey won. Packing for his very first Disneyland trip. Oh, my God. So excited for your your journey. Can't wait to wish you a happy 30th birthday on the most important day of the year, March 24th, as I've been told. So, um, packing a week early. Oh, my God. You are, you are very responsible, sir. I am leaving to go visit my friend in Milwaukee on Thursday night, and I am already stressed about the packing. Um, and I'm like, it's on Thursday night and it's for only like three days. So I don't know what my problem is. <laughs> um, well, oh, he's suffering from the Disney separation anxiety, blue power raid, solid. 
Um, hello, Aaron from Pittsburgh. We got Trey from Atlanta. Just water, Trey. What did you, what, why? What's going on? Was just at a dinner and had sangria there, which was terrific. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Trina, happy early birthday. Trina's birthday is tomorrow. Happy about that. Um, Rizzy Lizzie, great to have you in here. Uh, Lena went to their first silent disco in Philly. That is cool. The only time I've ever done a, uh, we got Pat from Ontario, Canada. I like everybody sharing where they're from. That's fun. Um, sorry, just let me know if I'm out of focus a little bit. I just was like, I think I made the focus a little too tight and now I can't sit right in my chair. I moved my camera yesterday um, to like the TV's like behind it. And it's like right where it has to be for the level for me. It's literally in the center of the square. So I was trying to be like, oh, if I just push it down, I can watch TV. But I just, I kind of like ruined up the whole, ruined the whole system and everything. So, oh, Lindsay Sellers in the house over here. Uh, Diane's coming to Wilderness Lodge in a little over two weeks. That's fun. Um, uh, Emily's deciding between a beer and pour a game. Ooh, Game of Thrones scotch. That's that fancy stuff. Is that a Johnny Walker one? Is, is that who did it? Um, I, um, yeah, I was debating. I, I was thinking, like, I was feeling maybe like a Manhattan tonight. Um, but I don't know. It's a little heavy. I'm trying to, uh, you know, like, trying to lose weight ever since I've been called fat. Also, listen, gang. Okay, first of all, I, would, I didn't finish my silent disco story. The Disney Cruise Line, I think, is the... They did like a silent disco or something like that. You put the headphones on and there were like two colors. So it was green and like red. And like, so there were two options of music to listen to. So you could tell who was dancing or what. And it was kind of, it was kind of interesting. It was wild. Honestly, that's, I feel like it's a great idea because I feel like then people could still have conversations in that bar because they could take them off and whatever. But, um, Yeah. Uh, anyway, Emily, hello from New York. Hello, hello. Oh, Jennifer's on Hawaiian time. It's the casual lifestyle over there, like you said, yes. Oh, Brian, congratulations. Brian paid off his student loans a couple of weeks back. Holy crap, what that, what a feat. Good for you, man. Good for you. Um, that is a big congratulations. Hello, Drew. Hello, hello. Um, Trey, aren't ashwagandha, ashwagandha tablets for something else? Um, anyway, trying to get ready for Hot Boy Summer. Yeah, right. I wish. Um, no, 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 no. Just trying to be a little healthier. Anyway, I did go to the doctor this morning because I don't remember if I told you guys, but I was having that hearing problem on my right ear. I had woken up and it was like felt a little muffled, a little like off. And then I... Um, like Friday, I woke up and it felt like it was like a hand over my head. And I was like, you know, like when you get the water in the air, it was, it was like even more than that. And it's just like, it was like, oh my gosh, it was crazy. So finally today I was like, well, I don't want to be deaf. So I, um, I, uh, I went to the doctor. I, I had to be there at 8 a.m. this morning. So that required me to leave my place at 7.30 and then go through that whole process, which then they ended up having to refer me to a specialist. So it turned out, it was like, I mean, it was like, uh, don't use Q-tips. I made the mistake. And um, basically, I had like compacted my like, they basically took a rock out of the inside of my ear that was like, it was gross. Um, but I'll tell you, they did that immediately, and I was like, well, now I can't hear out of my left ear. <laughs> so I was like, wow, I can't believe how well I can hear out of my right ear right now, to the point where it hurts a little bit. But then I'm like, now I'm worried the left ear, but they checked my left ear. But then I was like, oh, that's right. I did lose some hearing from working at Disney. And so I'm like, oh, dang it. Now it was realizing, I forgot how strong this had gotten since then. So, uh, yeah, Diane is here. Diane, for a hot second, I had thought I had your... I thought I had the fig gin to drink tonight, and I had drank it, so I was a little bummed out. Uh, but yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Yes, Cindy Mayer, Dr. Cindy Mayer is bringing up a great 
question. Did anyone watch the Academy Awards last night? I watched it from beginning to end. I finally have a little thing up here. I can I can watch uh, TV again um, because now in this the one benefit they've brought to this apartment complex, I think because they've kind of been dropping the ball and a lot of other stuff, is uh, internet is like included, like basic internet, which is fine because I'm like, it's great because literally I get no signal in here. So I, it's very difficult for me to watch like anything. But that that's exciting because it means I can watch the Olympics. I, mean, I hope I don't lose this place by the time the Olympics are on. But anyway, um, I watched it beginning to end. I don't know about any of you. For, first, we'll talk about the, well, just in general. I thought the show wasn't bad. I thought it moved along at like a really good pace. Um, I enjoyed the, I I both did and didn't enjoy. I liked the 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 nominees the five last uh um best picture actresses or best actor actresses and supporting actor and actresses coming out to present the awards to the currently nominated ones i thought that was really really fun um or past i should say past nominated uh, or past winners but some of them were better than others at that presenting so that was a little that was a little I feel like there were parts where I was like, did you read before you got out of here? Um, but that, I, I really liked that aspect of it. Um, you know, I was worried, like, so when it started, like, I, I don't not like Jimmy Kimmel as the host, but um, I was worried it was going to be, I feel like, what was I watching? I don't remember if I watched the Golden Globes or if it was one of the other awards show, but I forget who the host was. And it was just like, I think it was clips of the Golden Globes because I didn't watch the whole thing, but it was that one comedian guy. But he... I don't know. I feel like these shows, they're meant to celebrate and award these accomplishments in film. And I just kind of hate when they just make fun of all the movies that are nominated or something. It's fine to like have a little jest, a little humor. But I feel like like the Golden Globes, it was to the point where I was like, so you're just crapping on every one of the movies. Like, you know, like there are people who this was their dream to get here and you're just kind of being crap about it. So, um, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, I thought the ceremony was good. I thought there were some surprises in terms of the win um, for me. I, I was happy American Fiction got at least an Oscar um, for adapted screenplay, too, because it seems pretty, not pretty on the nose, but pretty like, yeah, that is what that kind of should have won for. Not adapted. Original, right? Was it adapted or original? I can't remember. Um but I, I did I did really enjoy that film, so that's why I'm glad. And it kind of really is the punctuation to the end of like the story that's being told in that so it was pretty good um i feel like john mulaney's part where he went off about american uh um not american field of dreams i'm sorry i don't know what i was gonna say american dreams a field of dreams was uh the part where i was like make him the host next year he's great but um i don't know i liked it I like, I'm a little, I'm going to say I am a little, a little disappointed that Barbie really only got song. I feel like Barbie deserved something more. And maybe people felt like the nomination was enough. Like I saw Poor Things. My friend Kim hated Poor Things. My friend Alyssa, who you might remember we had the movie chat with before, she loved Poor Things. I liked Poor Things. I saw it in the theater at Alamo Draft House. It is currently streaming on Hulu, if it is a movie you are curious about. Um, it is not for everybody. Uh, I feel like the beginning is a little slow. I liked where the movie ended up going, but I did think the whole time where I was like, you know what still makes me a little feel weird and uncomfortable is that this movie is written by a man. And I'm like, it, it's supposed to be about a woman's journey. And But I wouldn't have felt that way, I think, normally, except for it was very... It, it was very sexual and that's okay. But it was like, I, I don't know. It was just, there was that little bit of like her being taken advantage of, I feel like. And I don't know. I don't know. Something about it just felt a little whatever, but I get it. I get it. Whatever. It's fine. It, sometimes too, I feel like people just watch the trailers for movies and they're like, oh yeah, well clearly art design and this and that. I do think, I, I have not seen Killers of the Flower Moon. I know that Lily Gladstone was the um, was the uh, favored person to win. I thought she was going to win. She was on my list. I circled her because um, I've heard nothing but good things. But uh, happy that she was nominated. Um, it, well, 
Kathy the Dishes nominated, whatever. I, I meant like during the program, I saw that she's already in like another show that's premiering on Hulu and stuff like that. So I'm happy for her career trajectory is what I should say. Um, but yeah, it was great. I mean, here's the thing. She lost to Emma Stone, right? Emma Stone was phenomenal in that. But again, I haven't seen Flowers, the Killers of the Flower Moon, so I can't weigh on it like too much. But I, I it was one of those where I was like, man, Emma Stone is really good. Uh, I, I was kind of hoping Ryan Gosling would win for Barbie, but I'm also not upset Robert Downey Jr. won. I feel like uh, it's crazy to me that he didn't already have an Oscar because I do think he is one of those, like, acting is easy. I mean, I know in more recent years it started to feel like he was more persona than uh, than acting, but um, it's just it was, it was just one of those where I'm like, he deserved it. He deserved it. He did not deserve it, so... Um, I just feel like there was more, like, I thought Barbie could have definitely gotten production design. Um, I mean, I, I get, I get poor things. It was just, I don't know. It's just one of those things where I was like, ah, it's a little bit of a bummer, but I, I think Oppenheimer was fantastic. So, I mean, obviously I wouldn't, I wouldn't take any of those away. I kind of thought I watched, um, I watched the holdovers on Sunday morning. Cause that's on Peacock streaming, which I definitely recommend. It was a pretty good movie. Um, he was very, you'll watch it and be like, this is why this movie's nominated. And you'll, and he is very, very good in it. It is also wild to me that I think Paul Giamatti's only been nominated for, this is only his second nomination. He seems like one of those actors too, where it's like, oh no, that's an Academy Award winning actor. It's like, uh, he's kind of got that same thing with like Gary Oldman, where it's like, they are the role. They are always the role. They're, they're inhibiting the role they are. And so it is. It is wild to me that he hasn't a single, a single Oscar. Oh gosh, excuse me. I'm not tired. I'm not even tired. I don't know why I just yawned. Well, I am tired, but not like that tired. I don't. Anyway, let me see what you all have to say. Delana says Barbie is a state of mind, and honestly, maintaining its cult status through time will be enough for me. I do agree. I do think that Barbie is going to have this. Re I mean, it, Barbie had a cultural impact. And, um, I am happy that it was nominated for as much as it was. So it, it, it is good. So it did get recognition, which I, in some way. So I do appreciate that very much because honestly, if this was a couple of years ago, I don't think it would have. Um, so I do, I do appreciate that. Um, you know, it, it, it's, that was, I don't know. I'd like to see some more horror movies start getting nominated now. Um, Killian Murphy, I think. See, that's the thing. Killian Murphy is also one of those actors where I'm like, is always, I feel like whatever movie he's in, whatever he's in, he is like, he steals the show. Like he's, it's the scene, like, I don't know. It's like he's in the Inception and I know it's like not the major part in Inception. I would say Tom Hardy steals the show in that one. That's a great cast. Inception, if they had the Academy Award for casting for that movie, uh, I think Inception would have won that year. But um, I think... Uh, I'm very happy to see Christopher Nolan with an Oscar in his hand and uh, Killian Murphy and and obviously Christopher Nolan's wife is just as deserving. So that's pretty great. So I think there needs to be an award. I talked about this because Trey's bringing it up in the chat here. Maybe the Academy will come out with a retroactive award and Barbie will get one. I think there should be an Academy Award for movies that have sort of pierced through the cultural zeitgeist and maintain that status. Like, I think there should be something like for Jurassic Park, right? Like it is now 30 years later and I feel like Jurassic Park still holds up. Like like both both visually but and the story it is. Like it didn't age. You know what I mean? Like it's ageless, it's timeless. And it just is this movie that is just with generational. And I think movies like that deserve things. You know, it's like The Wizard of Oz. Like, you know, stuff like stuff that carries through I think deserves kind of that honor, you know, as it comes up around the same way that, that people kind of get those honorary achievement awards and things like that. I wish they would do something with like a movie. Um, I also was thinking I was and I guess it doesn't make it an Academy Award unless the Academy votes on it. But I was thinking it would be cool if they did something where like it started at the beginning of the night and it was sort of an American Idol thing. And the audience could vote on the movie that they feel like was most popular movie of the year or um you know, and maybe it's based on box office. I don't know. I don't know, though, because there are movies that finds their legs afterwards. So I would if it came out within that same year and then became a hit. I don't 
I feel like that excludes it and that's not really fair. So I feel like th that box office can't be the indicator of like, oh, you get an Academy Award because you're the highest grossing movie. Because it's not really a vote. It's just a distinguisher. The movie has that. It didn't, I mean, it earned it, but it's, I don't know. It's not something you vote on. It's just factual. Does that make sense? Mark, I am. Mark says, "Why weren't Killian Murphy and Rachel McAdams nominated for Red Eye?" Speaking of horror, listen, I remember when Red Eye came out because I believe it was like, what had Rachel McAdams just done? I don't know if it was like Mean Girls was finally like establishing itself in that cult status of a movie or what it was, but <clears throat> Rachel McAdams was definitely like on that incline of her career. Like, a, maybe I had just seen The Family Stone or something. I feel like she had done a number of movies right in a row. And Killian Murphy, I think, had just been... He had done 28 Days Later, but then he was also in Batman Begins. And I feel like I remember... I was like, I gotta see this movie. I think I actually own that movie. It might be down here somewhere. Buried. Yeah, the horror films are on the, the bottom shelf. So they stay close to hell where they come from. Just kidding. Um... Oh, man, I had a thing downstairs. Guys, I got a Ghostbusters backpack, and I was going to show you, but it's downstairs. I left it down there. I meant to bring it up. I'm sorry. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Just reading through what you guys are saying in here. Yeah. Rizzy Lizzy saying, I like how the Golden Globes added the new award along the lines of blockbusters. Um, yeah, Mark, I think she had done The Notebook by that point. Um, Emery is asking what we thought about John Cena presenting Best Costume Naked. Uh, it seems like a bold choice. I remember thinking, like, it seems like a dangerous setup for a wardrobe malfunction. Um, because he had that flesh colored, like Tarzan thing underneath, but it had to have been like glued onto him. Right. Um, and Brandon, I agree with you. They should have gotten Killian Murphy back for Tron Aries. I would have much seen a movie about Killian Murphy's character because that was the whole thing. Killian Murphy's character in Tron Legacy is the son of the guy from the first movie. Um, the guy who was like the Dillinger, Derringer, something, the main bad guy, I think, or the main antagonist. Um, but uh, I, the, he's not in there. The, the, the other guy isn't in there. Um, the girl isn't in there. Nobody, nobody from the other Tron movies is in this new Tron movie. So that's where I was like, okay, like, I don't think I like that. Because, I mean, like, I get it. Clue is gone and Sam, or not Sam, um, uh, Dylan. Wait, is it Dylan? Flynn? The adult Flynn, whatever. Jeff Bridges. He's gone, but, like, uh, how is Olivia Wilde's character, like, how is she not playing into it? Because literally, the movie ended and she's in the real world. So, I would like to see what became of the son of Flynn. And then, so, I don't know. I That seems weird to me that they're doing that. I don't know. I don't know. But I saw the video of Jared Little walking around. I don't know. He just weirds me out. I'm not, I'm not a fan. Jennifer, yes, I was using your... I drank out of the hard plastic uh, Pizza Hut cup tonight. Downstairs with my dinner. Mm, okay, so Emily Stein is saying, my friend is a costume designer in Hollywood. There is a campaign, Naked Without Us, to promote the designers using. That's why he was naked. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. That's pretty great, then. I appreciate that. I feel like one of my favorite jokes of the night was a really quick, like, Jimmy Kimmel um, was, uh, he said, Fran Drescher can go back to her charity work and reading to the hard of hearing. And I laughed a lot at that. <laughs> I feel like it was so bad. But I was like, she is loud. Um, yeah, I agree. Donna's saying Jimmy Kimmel was kind of mean to Robert Downey Jr. He took it well, but why was it brought up? Yeah, that was that part was a little bit of a bummer to me. I feel like somebody said he said something else about Emma Stone, but I think I missed what he had said in that moment because um, I couldn't have heard everybody make a noise on the, the thing. But um, yeah, I thought that was kind of... That's one of those where I was like, 
this is the, you know, he's in, you know, we should be celebrating. Like, yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know. They know each other, I guess, right, in real life. So maybe they, maybe they, maybe that's the line of their friendship. I don't know. I don't know. But overall, I feel like I was, uh, I was uh, pretty happy with the, the awards, I feel like. But yeah, guys, I have downstairs, I was going to share it because I didn't open it yet. Was uh, I got the Ghostbusters. Ross was kind enough to order a second one for me because I slept through the, uh, the day they went on sale, but got uh, a Ghostbusters um, lounge fly, the Proton Pack lounge fly. And uh, very appreciative of you mailing that, letting me Venmo you, all that stuff. I appreciate that very much, Ross. Um, and I was going to show you guys it because I didn't open it yet. And I am still debating about running downstairs, get it. But it would be like a couple minutes of dead air. And I don't, I don't want to do that to y'all, to all of you. Oh, also, I just realized I have two little airplane gins up here because I was trying to make a little uh, mini bar for like when my when cj stays over i'm like i'm always like here's your little mini bar so i like try to have little snacks and little cocktails up here <laughs> so i just realized i have these up here so like these ones and i think i have a vodka i need to get like one of each kind and like put them in this little thing so they're for guests that's why i don't want to have it but dang it if i had remembered to bring up a fresca i could have had a gin and fresca that would have been good Hello, Jared. Nice of you to join us. Yeah, I agree with you, Rizzy, Lizzie, the, like, the, like Jimmy, but I want a host that loves movies and celebrates everything in the last year. Like, I, I, I just wanted to lean. You know what? One of my favorite Oscars moments of, in like, my recent memory is, um, is, uh, the, when Hugh Jackman, did he not host once and he did the musical opening? I thought that was one of the best ones ever um, where they like strung together and it was like, it was the joke because it was during the recession, the housing crisis. And they, so like everything was kind of like made out of cardboard, but they sang about, um, they sang about all the, like all the, um, all the films. And I don't know. I'm like, I, I miss an opening like that. I, I did love I did love the performance of I'm just Ken. I thought Ryan Ryan Gosling killed it. I almost said Ryan Reynolds because my friend got in my head about always saying the wrong Ryans, and now I now I like thinking of her, and I'm like, oh my god. <sighs> they can't keep bringing Billy Crystal back, Trey. How many times is he hosted now? Like six or seven. Oh God, I don't know what I want to drink. I, the, that's maybe why I haven't like run downstairs really quick because I'm like I don't know. I was just gonna drink a. Oh my God, what if Larry David hosts the Oscars? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Yes, Fresca in the house. I had my Fresca with dinner though, so I'm like I don't want to have more than one in a night. It's like because I like it to be my little treat. Um. Okay, Emily, I'm going to say that... Let me post this one in the chat. So, Emily's friend costume designs a lot of horror films and has a blog, which is cool. Um, so, if anybody wants to check that out, they're Whitney and Adams. I would definitely look into that. I love anything about the industry. Anything in the industry. Oh, I'd be into Julia Louis-Dreyfus hosting, for sure. For sure. Um, no, I, I was, I've got, um, Spindrift down there on the refrigerator, I think. And I'm like, there's a blood orange one. I'm like, hmm. Get a Desiree, self-care, one minute exercise, one bottle of water a day. This past week. Um, sorry guys. I love Fresca. I know it's, it's like, and people are like, oh, it's such an old person drinking. I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. I think I liked it because my grandparents had it at their house. But it's just one of those where I didn't realize it was like a five calorie drink. It's, um, it's great. What was I going to say? Um, so this weekend I also went with Ross and Lana in the chat here. Um, Ava Max 
at Universal Studios Florida had the uh, Mardi Gras celebration still going on and went to see Ava Max. And I ended up knowing way more songs than I thought I did by Ava Max. Also, she was excellent. And the vibe was like a gay club. The gays were out in full force. And I was here for it. And then we went, we stopped by uh, because we waited like one song too long. So I didn't want to get stuck in the chaos of everyone leaving at once. So we, um, we went to the Cursed Coconut Club that's at City Walk and um, had a drink in there. And so uh, that was also like all the gays flooded in there afterwards. And I was like, this is the vibe that Universal needs to cultivate here. It's great. Um, oh, no. Shiva, sorry to hear about your uncle and their passing. Um, very sad. Uh, was Fresca one of the first diet sodas? That's wild. Fresca also is packed with so much flavor. So I guess I've just been drinking LaCroix and, um, Aqua and those other ones for so long that I was just like, wow, this is what taste is again. <laughs> uh... Drew is asking, uh, Rhino or anyone going to play the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection? You know, I saw that. I have Battlefront. Well, I have the PlayStation 4 Battlefront 1 and 2. I don't, I'm not good at those. Like, I like a narrative, uh, like a role, like a, what are the, what are those called? Um, a, uh, oh my God, someone help. Um, not a narrative. But a campaign, like a single player campaign, like I like, I like when there's a story to follow and go through. So, um, do, 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 do. <laughs> just waiting to see what everyone's doing. What are y'all doing? Yeah. Gang, I am gonna single-handedly bring Fresca back. You're, I've put the, I've put the earworm in for all of you, and now you do it for all the people you know. And we are gonna start this pyramid scheme of Frescas. And then before you know it, we're all Fresca influencers. There are worse things to be in life. Um, you know what I didn't finish playing that I really should finish? Besides Super Mario, we are gonna get back to that. Um, is, uh, is um. The Guardians of the Galaxy game that had come out for PlayStation 4. I had played it. It's a little off because it's like similar to the movie, but not similar to the movie. So it's like a weird vibe. But uh, I was like finally getting into it. And then I forgot what happened and I lost track of it. So I'm like, at this point, I'm, I'm almost like, I think I should just start it over. Um, I had that to play. And um, did you guys see that, that, that Indiana Jones game that's coming out too? I feel like I'll end up playing that. And then... Ding, ding. Tab. Tab's still around, I think. Um, I feel like there was another thing I was going to talk about. Caffeine-free Diet Coke out of here. He, you just, Jay, you just like that, that bronze can. Because it, it's so different than any other soda can. Um... I read, a th I, there was like a thing, when I say I read it, I scrolled past it, the headlining of an article that was like, apparently diet sodas are like awful for your heart or something like that, that they're just finding out about. And I'm like, oh gosh, oh gosh, we can't have anything nice, can we? Just leave us. Oh, Tab is gone. We had a Fruitopia vending machine in our school too. Thoughts on the new Ariana Grande album? I am not a fan of Ariana Grande. I do like the song Yes And, and I like the song Into You. That's about it. Um, she's not my she's not my vibe. Um, and that's okay. I just, I'm the only, only person I know who doesn't, who's not really into her, so I feel bad. I don't really have anything to weigh in on. Um, but yeah. Sorry about that. So I feel like I saw all the Oscar nominees except for Anatomy of the Fall, um, Zone of Interest, and Flowers of the Killer Moon. But I still want to see those. So I'm like, I gotta, I think 
I think Zone of Interest is streaming starting on like the 22nd or something like that. But did you all get your Ghostbusters tickets? Because they're on sale, baby. <laughs> um, Jeff says, I finally give in and got a got the Hogwarts game. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, it feels like every time I'm finally going to do it, she just says another terrible thing. Um, oh, the Eras Tour. Okay, so that Taylor Swift. Okay, so even if you're not the biggest Swifty, like, I, I feel like it's one of those things where people are like, oh, you're Swifty. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I like Taylor Swift. I think she's a smart businesswoman and stuff. I don't know every song on every album. I definitely not even listened to all the albums all the way through. The one that I love is 1989, beginning to end. I think that one's great. And then I like the singles a lot. And I, I would give them a listen to. And But that Eras Tour concert, I saw that in the theater, and that was pretty fantastic. So I am very excited to be able to stream that again uh, on Disney Plus starting the 14th. So it's Thursday night, I think. Um John's saying, you've never watched a single Ghostbusters. I think you need to correct your life a little bit. <laughs> I did see Dune 2. Oh, that was the other thing. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. I saw Dune 2. It was good. It was good. It was very good. I think I don't like the first one better, but I it, it does not have to do with the quality of the movie. It's just like, the movie is an epic in all senses of the word. It's very... Like Lawrence of Arabia, very big, very thing. Like if you can, I would really recommend seeing that in the biggest screen that you can possible. It's you're never gonna have a viewing experience like that ever again. It's so good. Um, definitely recommend. But I am the movie I am most excited for: Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. Wait, Jared, you're watching the Harry Potter movies for the first time ever? I thought you were just rewatching them. Oh, thank you. The Roosevelt's. This is that. The, I have this in the color one, too, which I like. Um, I just like the black and white ones. I know I'm saying subtle, but tonight. I like that Mushu is like right up here. It's got, and then like, you got Fox in the hat. See, I feel like you got some characters in here that like normally aren't front and center. Like Mushu is over here. Who's up here? Who's up here? Robin Hood right there on the shoulder. Lumiere. Dag. Um, I saw, I saw, uh, Dune 2 and IMAX must have been great. I saw it in the, um, I saw it in the Dolby Theater. Very good. So, yeah. I got my Ghostbusters tickets for next Thursday and Friday. I'm gonna go twice. I know I'm gonna go twice. I know I'm probably gonna go, like, three times in the opening. I love Ghostbusters. I loved the last one so much, but I just love that opening weekend vibe of a Ghostbusters movie. Um, but also AMC A list. So you're like, whatever, who cares? <laughs> okay, Jared says, so I only saw the first one group, uh, but it just went over my head, I guess. Growing up. Um, so the thing with the Harry Potter movies is like, I think they just get better with the exception of four. So it's like, oh, better. Oh, better. Oh, better. Oh, oh. Like, so they're always just really, really good. Um, yeah. I so I didn't know the story of Dune or anything like that. So I see the people that were like big fans of it and stuff. So it must have been really cool to see that. He's gotta make the third one, right? He's gotta. Oh, Lindsay has this shirt too. Your first Roosevelt purchase for this. Yes, this is the perfect shirt for Animator's Palace. Honestly, like if I had this one and then I mean I have the one that's in color, it'd be like make somebody wear that one so we're like the opposing things, which would be great. Um Uh, okay, I will, I will run and grab the bag. Goblet of Fire is your favorite. Okay, so my favorite, I think, is, like, the one for me that really, like, changed the game for me was the Order of the Phoenix. I, I thought that movie was, like, that's the one where I was, like, the acting is good. The direction is great. And then, um, the one as I got older, I'm, like, six, the, the Half-Blood Prince. I was, like, man, this movie is so good, too. But then, 
I really like seven part one. I like seven part two. Like I like I like that last run up of all of them. Um, and they're just like a completely different vibe. I love a good cry when you watch movies like that. So part one and part two are so good. Um, I do agree. I, f I feel like my problem with the fourth one, Jessica's saying it, she thought that four and five were the HPs that could have been two movies. Um, I think that my problem with like the fourth one is they rushed what, when I was reading the book, I felt like was some of the most essential parts, like essentially the last like 150 pages. And I don't want to like, you know, I know it's been out for a while, but I don't want to have Jarrett watching this and have him ruin or whatever. But you know, once it kind of takes the twist and it's like, I feel like in the movie, it's like that. But in the book, it was like this long thing where you're like, oh my God, how is he going to, how is this going to go? What's going to happen? And it really, that really is the part where it turns and becomes very, starts leaning more adult. And so it's like, I don't know, you know, but she's crap. So just watch the movies. <laughs> don't read into books anymore. Um... If you aren't try, if you aren't trying to buy clothes, don't do Ross. Right, yeah. Ross Ross says Ross and Lana have quite a collection. His collection is dwarfs my own. So But yeah. Um Let me go get this bag. Let me get the bag. It's gonna take two seconds, so it's literally like open down there. I won't get a drink. I'll just get this. We'll open the bag and we'll look at it. Hold on. Okay, here I am. I'm back. See, that wasn't too bad. Go. This beast of a lounge fly. I don't have a bunch of lounge flies. Since they stopped making the full-size backpacks, I was just like, oh. Oh, actually, though, did you see? I just saw a tease today that tomorrow Loungefly is releasing a new collection of new types of Loungefly. That they're like the um, collective and it's uh, like, there's like a backpack that's like, I think they're all meant for like traveling, but one's called like the influencer, the traveler. And then there's like a convertible bag um, that goes from like a side bag to a backpack. And then, um, so I think there was like four designs. Cause there's one that almost looks like a, not a briefcase, but something along that line, the backpack, the smaller one. And then there's like a new type of a wallet. So tomorrow it's like Loki and Star Wars. Um, and they're, they're much more, they're definitely for trying to bring in a new crowd of people, I feel like, and yeah, collective like the Borg. Um, so they're, I don't want to say more subtle, but it's definitely a completely different type of a design. So it is very, uh, it's interesting. Honestly, the backpack interests me because it's made for like, it's meant to be like for your laptop and stuff. And I'm like, hmm. But they they are like, I think the most expensive thing is like $125. And then it's like, the wallet's like 50. I forget. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm just going to pull it up while we're here talking about this stuff. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. I know I looked it up earlier. Okay, hold on. They've got like a Letterman jacket. There's a whole thing. Hold on, I found the pictures. Oh, these are like way more detailed than I thought I was going to find. Okay, so I'm pulling these pictures from the Nerdist website which it looks like these are just like promo stuff anyway. Oh, so this is the laptop bag. It's all these like social media influencers that I recognize, which is like Straw Hat Goofy. Um, you know, there's that guy who sang the Winnie the Pooh song. Hold on. I don't care about the Loki one. It's, Loki is like the weird one to start with. It's the guy who always does the power line dancing is in this one too. Um, Okay, hold on. I almost have them all. 
I definitely like the Star Wars ones better than the Loki ones. Oh, I didn't see the inside of the bag. It's like schematics. Oh, okay. Also, I see now how the bag is a convertible bag. Hold on. I think I've got one more photo. Okay, there we go. I think I got them all. Okay, so here is like the Loki. There's like that, and then this is the back of it. Um, you can see how it's like supposed to be like a little more like, I don't, I don't want to say classed up design. Um, but there's that, and then um, you can see here's like, this is why I'm like, oh, that one must be the laptop bag or what they call a laptop bag because he's putting a laptop in it. But I don't know. I don't think I'd use that one as the laptop bag. Now here are this, the, here's the Star Wars ones. So this is like the backpack. I think, I don't know if it's meant to be like travel related. I do like these backpacks when they have these like clips on the side here because I feel like when you pull it closed, it like cinches the bag. So if you're, if, if it's a big bag, like a wide bag, it'll keep it, it'll be able to shrink it down. Like I have a bag like that, but it's like, it doesn't have those things on the side. And that's my like one complaint about it. Cause I was like, oh, this could be a great park bag, but it feels gigantic when it doesn't have the stuff in it. But I do like how the, like the Rebel Alliance logo is in here. And then um, on the inside, it has uh, this pattern on it. That's like the schematics. And then there's another type of a bag. So there's this bag. It looks kind of small here, but the guy, when he's holding it, it's, it's, it's like pretty large. Well, you can't see me, but. Um, and then there's this other one that this, so this is, see how this is like, those are hooks right there, I guess. So you can, that one can be a backpack because that guy right here, he's holding it. And I'm like, oh, that's a pretty, pretty decent sized bag. So I was like, oh, okay. So the clips can go right there, I guess, and that makes the backpack, or they go right here, and then that makes it a side bag. And I'm like, honestly, that's a pretty good park bag, I think. Like, it looks like that's probably the same as like, uh oh, it looks like it's the same as the, uh, as like the regular lounge fly size. But then they, oh, I don't know what just happened. Um, then they get in these like uh, jackets or whatever to, um, I think that was everything. Anyway, it's cool. Kind of like the Star Wars ones. Anyway. Anyway, I think they're still, they're kind of also about like the same size as, and so I don't know. I'm just be curious. I'll poke, look at them when they're listed on the website. I still don't think they're on the website though, but yeah, the duffel one I'd like, I think, because it's like nice, but not like too big. Um, I don't know. They come out tomorrow, I think, um, because I think it said the 12th. So I think they're going to, I, my guess is because they're a brand new type of bag, they're going to sell out. But um, here's the thing I need. I'd be like, oh, I'm definitely going to get because I I do think I like the backpack because what I like about the backpack. Hold on. Let's look at the backpack again. What I like about the backpack is if you look here, like look close at it. The zipper. It looks like goes all the way around. So the, it has those two the two. Um, clips on either side to keep it closed, I think. So I think that whole bag opens up. Like it almost goes into the drink thing, but I don't know if that's just lining. You know what I mean? But it has to have a zipper right where his fingers are. So I'm like, I don't know. So I'm just curious about that one. If that one can hold a laptop, that one I'm like, mm, I kind of like that one. I kind of like it. 
I cannot be spending more money on another bag though. Another bag. But the side one, I like the side one and I do like, I, the duffel bag honestly looks like really nice too. I really like that one. Anyway, anyway, those are those. Those are coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, this is the bag that came in the mail today. And I didn't open it yet. I saved it for tonight. Waiting for tonight. Oh, I dreamed of this love so long. Waiting for tonight. Whoa. Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Waiting for tonight. Watch me be too afraid to ever use this bag. Are you guys like that with new stuff? Because I am. I'm always afraid. Like, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin it. And I think they only made like a thousand of these bags. So. But there's the thing. Th things are meant to be worn and used. Look at this baby. Look at this little baby. Pocket on the side. Pocket on the side. Pocket on the front. And then on the back here, we've got the Mr. Ghost. The Mr. Ghost guy. Ghostbusters, what do you want? Um, but it's got the lounge fly thing is right here. And then these clips are really nice. Oh, God, this is really high quality. And this is like on here, very nice. I think they'd done a design of this bag before. Oh, my gosh. That's great. It has the top, but then it's also a zipper because I hate when the bags are still open underneath. Here's the pattern on the inside. It's the State Puff Marshmallow Man and Slimer. Oh, and and the guy from the I Ain't Afraid of No Ghosts. This is a big bag. That's a big baby. That's a big baby. It's got a pouch in there, see? So there's a nice pouch. I was like, could this fit my laptop? I don't think it can. I was like, I don't want to take all the paper out right now. But what I like about this already is it feels like these pockets are actually functional on the side. So you'd be able to like put a phone or something in there or like my hand sanitizer, like wipes and Lysol wipes and everything. And then the front, but even the front one has a, has a fair amount of space in it too. So it's great. I feel like my only ding on this one is this should light up but that's okay but I like this bag I like it a lot uh what, was it? what is Annie saying I haven't watched Ghostbusters since I was a child I should rewatch them I should rewatch with my kids sometimes old movies are crazy to watch with kids because they're more adult than I remember oh wait till you watch Ghostbusters <laughs> But I was like a little kid. I remember like watching it. There was a there was a special. Um, there was a uh, there was a special like at my local like town's movie theater or movie theater um, rental store called Max Movies, and they were having a Ghostbusters contest where if you answered like all these questions right, you got a VHS copy of the tape. And, um, and I have no idea why, because I was definitely, it definitely would have been in the nineties and Ghostbusters came out in 1984, but, um, they, uh, I filled them out and then they called us and I had won. So I had this like Ghostbusters VHS when I was a kid. So it was great. But watching it as an adult, you're like, I cannot believe some of the things my mom let me watch. But, <laughs> um, but I used to love the cartoon show as a thing. I loved the cartoon show. Loved it. It scared the bejesus out of me. This is a big bag, too. Like, bigger than they've been recently. Like, that's the bottom. It's nice because it's also, like, a good... Sh it's, like, holding its shape really nicely. I mean, I know it's still filled with the stuff. But this is a good size park bag for me. Because this can definitely fit my camera. No question. My umbrella fits in here. A rain jacket. Um, you know, the poncho, everything I need for a park that I would bring. Guess what I just found? Another, another pocket. Right up here. That is so fun. No neutrino one, though. Hmm. 
I, I'm, I'm, I've seen a backpack where there was like a neutrino wand and I'm like, that's too much. That's too much. Neutrona wand? I don't know. Oh, the, the thing about the arms on this one too that's different than the other lounge flies is it's padded on the back, which I freaking love because sometimes with the Roosevelt shirt, the when they're leather all the way through, they slide off my shoulders. So it's like, oh, I can't, I can't put that one on. Like, or it's like sometimes it's aggravating. You can't do the one strap. You got to two strap it. Um, but this is cool. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a damn second. Glows in the friggin' dark. Are you kidding me right now? Who's glowing in the dark? We're gonna find out. And imagine, imagine, imagine all the people. Imagine if Ghostbusters comes to Halloween Horror Nights this year. I'm gonna use my phone on this guy. Is it just fluorescent? Like, I don't know. It says it glows in the dark. I don't know what part glows in the dark, but that, this is a cool bag. You know what I like about it too, is it's kind of one of those where it's, it's like, if you don't know what it is, it's also just like it, I don't want to say subtle, but it's like, it's like the right colors to kind of also be like, not make a big deal about it. Right. But I just, I just saw that this tag had the extra thing and it says glows best under UV light. Well, that would explain that. We're not turning that on up here. Glows in the dark, fluorescent. Bria en la izquierdad. I think this was a limited edition bag as well. But that's a cute bag right there, baby. That's a good size bag. Now, see, here's the thing. The only thing is, uh, I don't like to cross my Universal and Disney properties together. And I was like, well, technically Ghostbusters isn't at Universal anymore. But now if they, the rumors are true and Universal has relicensed Ghostbusters, now that's my Ghostbusters. That'll be my Universal backpack. I had a Ghostbusters. Do you want to see my other Ghostbusters lounge fly bag that I had? This was my regular size one because I bought some when they were like on clearance because Lord knows they're not making them anymore. But I got this one. I forget, it was like two years ago, something maybe. But it's a full size one. And the reason why I got it, pockets on the side. And then I also got this little puffy terror dog to put on the lanyard up here. So he hangs on the back and he stares at you and judges you. Well, you stare at me and judge me, but it's like the Ghostbusters like ice cream shop. And I was like, I love this bag. It's so cute. And I miss the full size lounge flies like these. I Cause it just was like a different type, a different pattern, but. I guess more money is to be made in the other ones now, and then there's no looking back, so it's fine. I'm still gonna use this one too, though. <laughs> I'll use that one when I think it's gonna rain, because that's what I'll be paranoid now about with that other one. <laughs> but anyway, I love pockets. You need an organization. We need the organization. Did you guys see that they um, they do? Um, let me see if I can find it. I think. I thought about getting one of these because I have a Pride Marvel lounge fly, which I might give away. I don't know. Um, the Black Panther one, which I think I'm going to give away, uh, and the Ewok one. And then I have the Red Ranger one. And those are, I got, I had gotten the Star Lord one because I had bought a bunch of lounge flies for like giveaways for my Patreon, for the personal Patreon I do. And I am debating if I'm gonna do the if I'm gonna do the Star Lord T'Challa one as a giveaway, or if I'm gonna keep that for me because I got that one pretty cheap. But I love it because his eyes light up, and it's also the better Star Lord, which is T'Challa. So, um, but I'm like, I think it's like a little bit bigger, but yeah, my Power Ranger one, my Red Ranger one, unfortunately, is like the smallest size lounge fly there is, so it's like useless but i will use that when i go to my power ranger convention but they make these like things and they're um they're official oh loungefly made hooks for your wall official hooks for your wall i didn't know that 
Um, but they make these um, like inserts now for the inside of the bag that are supposed to like, oh my God, accept the cookies, Jesus. Hold on, sorry. I have to go through the process of opening the image in a new tab. But they're supposed to... Well, this one looks kind of lame. But they're supposed to help with, like, organization. Hold on, hold on. I got them, got them, got them, got them, got them. Like these things. Oh, this was a PNG, so... We're not gonna we're not gonna be seeing that one. Um but see there's like it adds like sorry, I don't mean to keep saying like so you can have the water bottle, the glasses, all this sort of stuff. It, it just keeps it all organized, which is what I would like from a lounge fly. So I've been debating about getting one of these. Um Ross does the thing where he's always wearing he matches lounge flies to his Roosevelt's. And I was like, that's a park dedication. That is Disney bounding. Although I don't know if that's technically bounding, but that is definitely committing to that Disney, that Disney lifestyle, which is great. But, um, um, okay. Dana is asking if you had to pick which bag would be your must have. <sighs> Okay, so I guess I would say the one that I use the most, like the one that is my like go-to grab bag. I, I don't know. Does that make it my favorite? It probably is. Is this one. So this was, this is a Goofy movie. You kind of see, it's like Max and I'm dancing. It has pockets on the outside, which I like, but it's my like, I can wear it in any Disney park. So that's why I always grab this one. And also... With all the loud shirts I wear, I feel like it it matches the most of them most of the time. Also, here is that Star Lord bag I had gotten. See, so he's in the wrapper still because I'm like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't need another one of these. And then the Ghostbusters one came out, and I was like, well, I definitely need that one. But I'm a bags hang up on the wall in front of me here, in front of me here. Oh, gang. I, yeah, I do the fanny packs a lot more. That's why I'm like, I, like in those, um, just because usually it's like, unless I have my camera. So like the bag is, well, then in the summer, we need the water bottles, right? We need more stuff. I need my fan. So the fanny pack doesn't cut it all year round. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that. Stollard one, his eyes lights up too. I just can't figure out how to do it while it's still in the wrapper. So I don't want to take it out of the wrapper. But uh, yeah, I should do a what's in my bag video, honestly. Um, but I like the size of this Ghostbusters one because I'm like, that definitely can fit my camera. If there's a if it's raining and I need to like bring a rain jacket, umbrella, all the stuff I bring in the park can easily fit in there. The fan, all that stuff. So this is a pretty solid one. I'm pretty happy about that. But I don't want to get... I don't want it to get wet, so it's one of those. I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? It's gonna be that a tough thing this summer. I think we're nearing that. I was shocked today. It was only like 72 degrees, which was insane. And I was like, well, they, we've been blessed with Mother Earth blessed us for with one more day of nice weather. Oh, next Wednesday is forecasted to be 68 degrees. Maybe we're gonna get one more day. Tuesday, 73, 68. That's wild. It has never been this cool this late in the season. I am not complaining. I am loving it. Whatever keeps the humidity away. But it does look like Friday, Saturday, Sunday are like 90 degrees. And then it's going to rain Monday. Oh, fudge. Monday's the day. Sorry, my friend from was texting me. Um, thanks for coming and hanging out, Tigarette. All right, guys. You know what? I think I might cut out too. We've done. We've been doing it for about an hour. 
An hour goes by in like no time. It's crazy. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, I feel like um, I think we should still be able to do one of these next Monday, and um, hopefully I'll have another video for you later in the week. I've been thinking about maybe trying to do something where I like check in daily throughout the week on using my like other camera just to be like, oh hey, what's up? Like. I don't know. I want to get myself in the habit of just like kind of doing that sort of a thing. So if that's something you're like interested in or whatever, what, you know, I don't even know what I'd pop in and talk about. I'm not sure. I looked at like, I was getting, I was in like a mood the other night where I was just like, um, I was like, how can I carry my camera in different ways? So there was one where it was like, it can clip onto a bag, like a, a shoulder strap. And, um, I was like, oh, that would be fun to just kind of like walk around, you know, and, and like talk to it. Or um, I was thinking about hanging maybe my cell phone from like the rear view mirror or something like that. Not to look at while I'm driving, but put camera or something somewhere and like take you on a car ride and we could have a chit chat or something like that. I don't know. I'm just playing around with some ideas, looking at something fun, something different. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see, gang. But yeah. Plot out theme nights. I agree, John. I think so. Um, I appreciate all of you in here. I just wanted to update you too and let you all know I had my first therapy session today. And it went... Well, I don't know if it went well. I mean, it, it definitely was very clear to me by the end of it. After two hours, I was like, I have a lot to discuss. So um i'll keep you filled in when it, it gets more substantial and stuff like that but i was like it was good i'm really happy i went through with it um and that was good so jennifer we need a question discussion page where we can interact um well so like youtube has that community tab where i think you guys can leave me chat chat in there i i i, I gotta like i gotta uh i gotta figure that out um or get better about looking at it. But it's in there. It's basically like a Facebook wall, I think. So if you ever want to leave me any like YouTube related comments and you don't want it on a specific video, just head over there. I check that. I'll check it gives me notifications when people post on that. I'm just the only one who's ever really posted on that. So but yeah, anyway, sorry. Sorry this was one was a little lower energy. I just like I've been up I didn't sleep very well last night and I've just been it's been a long day. So but I looked forward to this today and I'm happy that we were all here today. So that's feeling good. That's great. I'm glad we did this. I'm glad we're getting into the groove of our Monday evenings. Like, so, like I said, um, next week I should still be able to do one around 8.30 um, and uh, Eastern time. And then, yeah, no, I think, I think that's it. But stay tuned to the channel. Like I said, if you're not subscribed, you know, click that little bell and it'll let you know if I ever pop in for a random live stream or whatever. I think it'll give you a push notification if you've got the app on your phone or something or send you an email, something like that. But, um, but I just really appreciate all of you um hanging out and and popping into the chat and those of you who are just watching from the comfort of your couches or wherever you may be watching and listening or anything like that i just want to say thank you to you as well don't feel obligated to leave comments i appreciate you don't you know i know that sometimes people are like oh i leave you a comment but i want to leave a comment and i'm like i appreciate you you are all very important and you couldn't do it without your support so thank you very much everyone um if you are watching this and you want to click a thumbs up, that would be greatly appreciated. I think it just like pushes it out there so other people who are subscribed know that we do this and we can build our community a little bit more and stuff like that. So um, thank you, everybody. And uh, I'm excited and I'm excited to share this journey of everything with you, the therapy, everything else. Um, so just, you know, just thanks for the support. Thanks for being there. Thanks for being a shoulder. Um, you know, and just being who you are. And, uh, you know, I think last week uh, I tried to encourage people to be, you know, to be creative and do like a creative thing and do something fun. And I feel like I'm happy to say I did do a creative thing that I hope to share. Sooner than later, I started writing something that I hope comes to fruition that could be like um, maybe like a short film or something like that. But I am putting the vibes out there to be like, it's going to happen. So, um, so that's my, my thing. And I feel like I'm going to continue that over this weekend, but I hope you, you all, uh, out there find a little bit of happiness this week and a little bit of thing to get you through it and celebrate it, celebrate yourselves. Okay. Take some time to just say, Hey, I'm here and I did it and I made it. 
you made it. We are all here right now at this time. Congratulations. And uh, I appreciate you all. But I'm serious. Take that time. Look in the mirror or do something. Just say something nice to yourself about yourself. And then what I want you to do is pick somebody else out there and push that out there to them too, okay? So I think uh, that'll, be our, that'll be our goal this week, to spread a little bit, of, little bit of positive vibes out there, you know? So thank you very much, everybody. I hope you have a great night and a great week.